All right, good morning, and welcome to the Frog Connected Classroom Discover Career Series. Uh, please lead the discussion on discovering careers by encouraging your friends to follow this lesson by creating and sharing pictures, uh, videos, digital posters, posts, your stories, and even your own interviews, if you have, via social media, uh, like Twitter, Facebook, with the hashtag FrogCC or hashtag Frog Comp Sci for today's session. Uh, you can continue to post us questions in the group chat and to viewers. You can use the Q&A app, or you can also tweet us your question using hashtag FrogCC or hashtag Frog Comp Sci. All right, with me here today is Craig Roberts, a computer scientist. Hi, guys. Welcome to the <coughs> session. Uh, Craig, would you like to introduce yourself and tell us uh, what is the title for your job and also how many years have you been in this field? Okay, so hi guys, I'm a web application developer and at the moment I work for Frog Agent. I've been doing this professionally for three years but I've been playing with computers since I was 13. All right. That's when I built my first computer and it exploded. Actually, 13 years old, you build your own computer. Being a computer senior, but my laptop. All right, uh, can you tell us a bit more about your study background? Like, what was your ambition when you were in high school, and how that led you here? So, when I was a kid, I always wanted to be a doctor when I grow up to try and figure out how things work and how to fix people. But it turns out that biology is really complicated, so computers were a lot easier. I did two years at college studying how to take computers apart and put them back together again. And then I did three years at university in the United Kingdom where they taught me an awful lot of things. And after that, I had to get a job in the real world and I ended up working at Frog. All right, so your degrees uh, in computer science was three years. Three years of studying. All right. Can you tell us a bit more about what do you actually learn within that three years? Is it all about coding and computer software and programs? So there isn't actually a lot of coding at university. Coding is something you do later on in the study program. To begin with, they teach you about how to take a computer apart, which pieces fit together, um, how to fix broken pieces. So the physical hardware of the computer? Computer, like the mouse and the keypad and all the... Exactly. And also how they work, how the computer talks to other computers, so right. networks. A lot of it can become kind of mathematical, but it's a lot easier to see it when you've got a computer in front of you to work with. So computers kind of make maths a lot easier for me, because I was terrible at maths in school. All right, cool. Um, can you tell us more about what do you do now as a computer scientist on a particular day, like from morning until uh, where you go off work, what do you actually do? Right, so it changes every day actually, but most of my time in my current job is spent creating new features for Frogos or fixing problems that we already have. So it's generally writing new things or fixing old things. And that's kind of why I moved into this from being a doctor to a computer scientist. Okay. You still get to fix things, but you don't have to worry about killing someone. <laughs> Interesting. All right. Um, so why are you so passionate about this job? Why, why, what is most uh, enjoyable about being a computer scientist? So it's finding out how things work. Um, one of my favorite subjects in school was chemistry and physics because you get to find out how the world works on a little piece, on a small level, and that kind of carries up to big things. So at university they taught me about binary, ones and zeros, and from ones and zeros you can build all the way up to, well, something like Google Hangouts, something like Frog. So it all starts with all the zeros, zeros and the ones. It all starts nice and small, and you get to build more and more complicated things, kind of like uh, molecules in Very chemistry. Interesting. Very interesting. So uh, as a computer scientist, is there any particular skill set that you need? So you need to be good at talking. You need to be good social, socially. What else? What other skills other than computer skills? 
So one of the things a lot of people miss is communication. Um, when you're writing code and you write a piece of code for somebody else has to fix, it's kind of important to make sure that you do it as simply as possible. If they don't understand what's going on, you're going to make their job a lot more difficult. So that comes back to the next step, which is a logical mind. You need to be able to take things apart piece by piece and understand how they fit together. There's a lot of times when I try and fix one problem with Frog and we end up breaking something completely different. So you need to be very careful, very methodical. So as a computer scientist, it's a lot of like fixing and repairing. So while you're fixing it, then you're actually making up new errors. Is that it? Pretty much. Um, <laughs> it's building things and fixing things. But one of the coolest bits is when you get to design the new system. So the first part of any project is when you put the documents together to explain how the system is going to work. Uh, that's the most difficult bit and the easiest bit to get wrong. Mm. So when you move on to actually building the system, you realize that you've missed so many areas. Okay, interesting. Uh, well, as a computer scientist, uh, how far can you go in a company? So you can go all the way up to owning your own company. Um, the place called Silicon Valley in America is mostly built for people who start their own companies. Um, I don't like to think how much they earn. Um, the typical route is something like a junior software developer. Then you'll go up to senior, where people report to you. After that, you'll become a team leader or a manager. And that's when you manage, you can manage up to 60 software developers at a time. After that, you're looking at something like company director, chief executive, chief technical officer is quite a good one, mm. where you're in charge of an entire company's technical requirements. All right. Very good. Interesting. Uh, I didn't know that computer scientists can go so far up to like, you know, a very high level uh, in management. Um, I would like to know, as a computer scientist, uh, do you only work with computer companies? Do you get to go into other fields? No. So one of the good things about computers is that they're used everywhere. So there's an excellent case with medicine. MRI scanners, um, the drips that you see people using, they're all controlled by computer systems. In the hospitals? In the hospitals. Uh, cars, buses, they all have computers in them. Aeroplanes are quite important. There's a whole section in my degree program where you study aeroplane systems because they have to be, if something goes wrong, the aeroplane drops. It's very important to get that kind of system right. So you can go pretty much anywhere with a degree in computer science. So I guess that also uh, helps in answering, is the job opportunity still widely available if I take this course? So like you said, I guess, there are more job opportunities than there are people to fill them. Interesting. There are going to be 20 million jobs not filled by 2020. So in the next 10 years, we need more and more developers. If you take a development course or if you learn to code, you'll definitely get a job. It's practically guaranteed. So I guess it's a very good field to go into moving forward as we go into the more uh, technology-wise uh, uh, century. All right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, the simplest thing is you can always fix your own computer when it breaks. So um, then, like, as someone from the UK coming to Malaysia, do you have any advice for, let's say, our Malaysian students who are thinking of going to work overseas? Yeah, kind of. So when they first offered me the job in Malaysia, I was nervous about moving halfway around the world. Uh, I think my mother cried, actually. But I didn't even talk to my mother before I said yes. I realized I couldn't possibly say no to something like moving across the world and getting to experience a completely different culture. And I've been here for almost a year now, and it's been the most amazing experience of my life so far. So how, okay, that's very good. Uh, how, how did you find a job like from the UK then to now in Malaysia? How did you get into this, this line? So when I graduated from university, they provide a kind of 
Hello. 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 Yeah. Um, I didn't really know what I wanted to do, so I took the first job that I was offered. What's your name? It was a massive sports company in the UK, a multi-million pound company. You need to be your lord. It was a bit of a mistake. In my third six months, I moved from a sports company to a sports company. It was a lot easier to have a bigger impact in a small company. Because it's so much smaller, you can do people in the island, you get to make more of a difference. You get to make, you get to code more, which is quite nice. Um, yeah. So we have a question from a student from SMP Puchong. As a professional, what do you think about this kind of I guess, want to know as well, how many years does it take from a novice to up to uh, how far you can go. Okay. So when you leave university, you're called an entry level developer, kind of like a, well, basically a junior developer. After three years, you're a mid level developer, and after five to eight years, you can probably go for a senior job. So it's quite, you can progress quite quickly actually. Within before you're thirty, you can be in a senior position. All right. Cool. So that'll be. 10 years up to a very quite high management level, isn't it? After that, yeah. I mean, quite a lot of my managers are less than 40, and some of them are barely over 30. I see. All right, um, there's a student also from another student from SMK, Puchong, asking what kind, what kind of qualities are needed to be a computer scientist? I guess the motivation, your attitude. <laughs> so attitude-wise, you need, you need to be really patient because people always get frustrated when their computers don't do things that they want them to do but the computer only does what it gets told to do so it's kind of like working with a small child you have to explain everything in baby steps to the computer and if you don't have a certain amount of patience you're going to get very stressed very quickly <laughs> but you also need some creativity mm. so sometimes it's really difficult to explain to the computer what you want it to do and sometimes you have to kind of think outside the box and try and think of, okay, how can I do this a different way that's actually a little bit easier to understand? All right. Um, yeah, so as a computer scientist, um, can I know your salary range then? What is your starting salary So as a computer scientist? Right, so in Malaysia, a starting salary could be anywhere from, I don't know, somewhere between two to four thousand ringgits a month. Two thousand is probably a good place to start. Um, up to senior level developers, it probably goes up to sort of eight thousand. Um, if you're working abroad, it kind of doesn't really have a limit. Um, what if you own your own company? Does it take a lot to start up your own company? So. I don't really have a lot of experience mm. in that, but I do know people who have left college or school. Some people have never been to college or university, and they start their own businesses, and they do very well. Um, they actually get other people to buy their company for them, cool. and then they get paid. So they get paid to build their own companies, essentially. The That's only requirement is you have to convince someone that it's a good idea to pay you. Yeah, so I guess I guess that works for like a company like Facebook, like uh, YouTube. Um, That's it. The guy who made yeah. Facebook never finished college. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, that's <laughs> interesting to know. So um, there is a question to uh, from Mohamed Mush uh, Kairu, I think. What is the subject that you need to master in order to take this uh, course? So science and arts. Is there any particular stream that you need to go to? So it's definitely a science-based stream. Mm. Um, the very first computer programmers were mathematic, mathematicians and physicists. So physics and maths are very good subjects. For me, I was never very good at maths. And learning how computers worked actually helped me understand maths. So it kind of works backwards as well as forwards. It's all to do with logic. 
So as long as you're learning something about the way things work, which is why I said chemistry earlier, physics, chemistry, and maths are all very good mm -hmm. subjects to get into computing. But computing can help you improve your maths, physics, and chemistry skills. So you can either work uh, forward or work backwards with the subjects that you are mastering. Yeah, they kind of help each other. They're connected. Yeah, so mathematics is very important. Remember that. <laughs> but you can also uh, improve that while you are learning to be a computer scientist. Um, there's a very interesting question. Is being a computer scientist boring? Since oh. all you see is a bunch of codes and errors and bugs. So it sounds pretty boring, doesn't it? All you do is sit in front of a computer screen all day. Um, occasionally you get to see some sunlight. But <laughs> it's kind of difficult to explain. Um, anyone who really enjoys maths will understand, or physics. The way you get to see a system build itself up from smaller parts is really quite amazing. And when you get to a certain level, so I'm currently working with Frog, I get to build something that 10 million people use. Um, and I don't know of any profession where you get to do that, apart from maybe making skyscrapers. So doctors get to fix people, and they get a fix out of that. It's, it's a very stressful job. And computers can be a very stressful job sometimes. But it's really worth it to see the difference that you can make with software. Thanks. Frog is something completely different. I've never seen anything like it, which is why I came there. Yeah. So it sounds boring. But it's actually quite satisfying, isn't it? It's quite So rewarding. whatever you do here affects like thousands and millions of people out there. Yeah, it's quite cool to say that you've got a line of code on your screen. <laughs> if you get it wrong, 10 million people are going to know that you got it wrong. It's very important to get things right. So yeah, very, very important in the lines of like programming and stuff. Uh, yeah, that's very good. So uh, there's a question asking um, from us, from SMK Ampang Pacha. Is computer scientists and computer pro programming the same thing, or are they the, from different fields? And as a computer, in, within computer science, how many fields can you break into? Uh, a lot. So <laughs> I probably couldn't even list them all to you. So. Computer science is kind of like physics. So if you study physics, you can become all sorts of things, like an engineer. Um, you can research physics. You can study uh, astronomy. You can go in all sorts of different places. Computer science is the same sort of thing. You can build software. You can build computers. Some of my best friends never actually learned to program. All they liked to do was build computer networks, like you have in school. Some people build computers and sell them for money. Some people build gaming computers. Some people build games. Some people build mobile phones. So that will be under computer science? It's all under computer science. So what about programming? Programming ties them all together. So if you can uh, program in one language, you can program in any language. So, so programming is like the base for computer science, is that it? It's pretty much universal, yeah. So now that I've learned to code in a couple of languages, I can work on Frogos, I can build games, I can build iPhone applications, I can build computers. So I think like you mentioned just now, you can also build medical softwares and like softwares of, for so many different kinds of fields, isn't it? That's it. So I'm not very good with medicine because I never did biology. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a possible pathway as well. Yeah, pretty much any industry you can think of starts with a computer in it somewhere. And right. it builds up from there. Ya, yeah, so uh, kepada sekolah-sekolah yang ada pelajar ini masuk computer science, uh, please remember that this is a very, uh, I think it will be a very luxurious field, isn't it? And ramai uh, apa banyak bidang yang inginkan uh, computer science. So anda boleh masuk dalam bidang uh, medical, boleh masuk dalam bidang uh, computer, architecture, engineering. I guess like all these fields will need computer science. All right. Um, yeah, so how can computer science contribute to weapons development? So I guess weapons development will be one of the areas that computer science can go to, isn't it? Well, yeah, it's definitely something that goes in weapon guidance systems. Um, it works both ways. Computers run both offensive weaponry and they do defense as well. So anti-missile aircraft, 
anti-missile guns, um, some of the missile barriers that countries use, they all run on software. Um, that's another kind of thing that's very important to get right. Yeah, obviously, obviously. You get it wrong, you get fired. So I guess if you actually go into this, you'll also need a lot of integrity and honesty with yourself, isn't it? Yeah, so one of the things they cover in university is ethics. Uh, computer ethics. You have to understand that sometimes people don't use tools the right way, and you have mm. to understand that it's up to you whether you want to build that kind of thing. Mm. If you're interested in defense for whatever reason, you can go into and build weaponry systems. If that's against your morals, that's kind of for you to decide. All right, uh, so I guess we can open up for a uh, question and answer from uh, schools in the session. We have, we have a lot of questions in the group chat, but why don't we have schools verbally ask your own question to Craig? Okay. Yep. Can we have the first school? Is there any school? If you have a question, please stand in front of the screen so that uh, we can identify you. Kalau ada soalan, sila mara ke depan. Ataupun tweetkan soalan anda. Do we have a school with a question? Okay, uh, we have one. Yeah, I think uh, Cikgu Musa, is it? Uh, Sir Lionel. Sir Lionel. Is okay, it here? Can <laughs> um, we'd like to ask. Um, what's Sorry, the we, can't, we can't hear you. Let me ask. Let me ask. Okay, go ahead, ask. Uh, ask. I would like yeah, to ask. Sit, I think. Um, do. Wait, are we muted? Yep. All right. So I know. Please go ahead and oh, ask your question. Let me ask. Let me ask. Let me ask. Let me ask. Okay. Um. So, what is the potential for artificial intelligence? Sorry. Artificial intelligence. Was that right? Can you hear? Yes. 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 What is the potential for artificial intelligence? That's kind of tricky. In the 1960s, they intelligent right now. Obviously, they were wrong. We don't have Terminator or Skynet. Uh, Google is working on artificial intelligence. They've just purchased a string of companies looking at how to fix things like self-driving cars. Uh, SpaceX, I think, uses artificial intelligence to launch their rockets into space. Um, it's got a lot of potential. It's just an awful lot more difficult than anyone ever expected. Um, Crazy fact, I have actually built a neural network in my spare time. And it was crazy difficult, and it still runs into the wall. It can't figure out how to walk properly. <laughs> but it's a really interesting area. Um, you even end up using it in things like business analytics. So finding out what your customers want before they know they want it. Amazon is obsessed with artificial intelligence. They want to fly drones that deliver your parcels. So there's like so many things that can involve artificial intelligence, isn't it? It's massive. Um, All right. Do yeah. we have any more? Uh, do we have any more questions from other school? Okay. Uh, hello. Hello. Hi. Yes. Yeah. Can hear you. Uh, <laughs> Uh, we would like to ask uh, the best university for this course. What is the best university for this course? Or is there any famous university that uh, produces computer scientists? That's kind of tricky. So, for computer science, I guess the famous ones are something like MIT, Harvard, Cambridge, and Oxford. But I, think I didn't go to Cambridge or Oxford. I went to a tiny university in the middle of Wales in the United Kingdom. Um, to be honest, I'd say you should visit the university and see how passionate they are, how much time you can get with your professors. When I was in my final year of university, my professor took the time to help me study on my own. So it wasn't really the university that made me a computer scientist. It was the people I met when I was there. So as long as you, as long as you feel like you're going to be a good fit for that university, you should be fine. All right. That's good, but 
I guess you have heard also a list of uh, universities, but then it also depends on yourself, right? Yeah. All right. Um, yeah. Do we have any other questions? That's a very good question. Thank you very much. Um, yeah. Do we have any another school with a question? If you have a question, please uh, stand in front of your screen and please post in the group chat. Um, Okay, um... B-E-A-8-6-3-7, is it? SMK Ampang Pecah. SMK Ampang Pecah has a question. Wait. Okay. Can you recommend us some of the online tutorials that can be trusted for students? Sorry, can you repeat your question? Can you recommend us some of the online tutorials that can be trusted for students? Oh. Online tu tutorial, you mean like programming? Uh, about computer scientists. Ah, is there any online tutorial like, if you want to learn on your own? <coughs> That's kind of difficult. I don't know of anything. Um, there are plenty of websites which offer free courses. Um, a lot of them are to do with. So, websites are a good place to start. Back when I was 13, the very first thing I did was build my own website, and it looked completely terrible. I have no idea how to design websites. And that's where it built from, so I started off with a website and moved up into more complicated areas. So you don't need to follow a formal study program to get started. Um, you can start off just by following a tutorial. So Honestly, is, is I... Is there any online particular website that you would like to recommend? Or like, how do you search for a good one? Is there any particular keywords that you put in Google search? <laughs> I'm going to say not really. Um, actually, I try and read as many as possible and try and see what's common between all of them. So I don't like to put all my faith in a single website, which might be wrong. I try and read as many websites as I can and see what they can all teach me. Um, but I do use Google. I practically live on Google every single day because there's too much to remember. You can't remember everything about how computers work. Google, right. being able to search and find information is pretty important. Yeah, so I guess uh, don't put all your eggs in one basket, that's what they say. Pretty much. Yeah, so you have to learn from uh, different uh, websites, different books, and then uh, try to figure out on your own as well, make sense of everything. Right. Yeah, so I have a massive list of websites. I have a bookshelf full of computer books. Mm. Um, other people, the people I work with in Frog, teach me an awful lot more than I can find on the internet. All right, very good. So the people, the books, and also the websites, all together. Everything. Yep. Read it all. Very good question. Um, yeah, do we have another question from another school? Sri Pakan. SMK Sri Pakan. Hello, SMK Street Pocket. Do you have a question for Craig? That's it. Yep, the one raising his hand. Oh, yeah. cool. Um, <laughs> are there a lot of job opportunities in this particular stream? <clears throat> yeah, so, I mean, my experience is a little bit difficult because I come from the UK, but I think I said earlier there are more jobs than there are the people to fill them. So we need developers. I mean, maybe in a couple of years you can join us and help us build Frog because we need some help. But there are plenty of opportunities. There are thousands and thousands of jobs. There are some companies who will actually pay you to move and go and work for them. Um, but in Malaysia particularly, I think there's a lot of jobs for computer developers, good ones at any rate. Everyone leaves. So sometimes you get developers who become really, really good and they go to Singapore, China, they go abroad, which means that in Malaysia, you have a bit of a shortage. Yeah, so 
I hope. Yeah, I hope I hope you uh, got your answer from Craig. Thank you very much for the question. Yeah, it it would be very good to know whether it's a good field to go into, isn't it? Yeah, I think uh, SMK Dr. Sri Amani Raja from Johor has a question. The SMK Dr. Sri Amani Raja. <coughs> Hi. Hello, TDDI Jaya. Hi, TDDI Jaya. Go to TDDI. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Other than being a computer scientist, what other careers can you do from the field of computer science? Hello, SMK TDDI Jaya. Do you have a question for Craig? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Hello? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. Uh, hi. Um, we're wondering, other than being a computer scientist, what other careers can you pursue from making a major in computer science? Oh, how many else? How many things else can you join? So what else can you major in to what, get the same kind of job? So I guess what going to towards uh, going master. Like how is there anything else you can specialize in? Oh, okay. So one of the things they do at degree level is you have minors and majors. You can take computer science with something else like business. I think Sheila, the lawyer, said business is an excellent degree to take with anything because you get to understand how companies work. And it's really useful if you want to start your own company. So I know a lot of people who took computer science with business, and it worked out very well for them. Uh, they would then go on to do a master's in business. Um, some people went the other way. They took a computer science course, and then they would major in a specialist field, something like artificial intelligence, for example. So computer science is an excellent base to use with other degrees. But mine was pure computer science. I don't really you have much advice there. You haven't majored in any uh, specialized fields yet. No, I am still obsessed with everything. I can't decide what to study next. Yeah, but I guess you can. You can, like you said, you can actually go into a lot of majoring fields and uh, specializing in a lot of other fields with yeah. the computer science base. So computer science can also be a minor, actually. So you could study ah. something like medicine and mm. then study computing for six hours a week. I see. So that when the medical equipment breaks down, I suppose you have some idea of how to fix it. Yep. All right. Okay, Dr. Amastra. I hope that answers the question. Uh, thank you very much. So we have another question from SMK Dato Sri Amadi Raja. Yeah, SMK Dato Sri Amadi Raja, you are on. Do you have a question for Craig? Hi. Hello, hello. Can you can you hear us? Yes. Yes, we can hear you. Yeah. Okay. Right. You have a come, come. Don't be shy. Hi. 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 Just. Hi. Uh, hi, I'm Olivia from SMK Dato Sri Amadi Raja. Um, I would like to ask which part of computer programming students can use to complete their project. Softwares or programming? Uh, that's what parts of computer can help you with your schoolwork. A really good question. I'm sure we're still in school, so I can help. Um, one of the simplest languages to learn is the one that I study, which is one of the web languages. So you can create web pages that look a lot like games. So there are some simulations you can do on the web pages. Like, uh, what are they? So I've seen industry simulations. A language called JavaScript. JavaScript. Yeah. All right. I mean, 
That's probably one of the easiest ones to get started with, because the rest of them get a bit more complicated. Um, any language is good, to be honest. It depends which one you click with the most. So some people find it easier to program in different languages. They find it kind of matches their thinking style a bit better. So do you encourage them to try all and then find the best one for them? Yeah, so I can program a little bit in perhaps 12 different languages, but I'm only really good with two or three. Mm. Um, I mean, the key thing is to try different things out and just keep going. And sometimes it doesn't even have to have an interface. You don't have to be able to see anything. You can get things like a calculator running where you type numbers in and it gives you the. You can do mathematical equations are the simplest thing to start with. You can do maths in any language. I see. Right. I hope that helps. Uh, so I guess you have to try everything as well and then find whichever that is uh, suitable for you. It doesn't mean that uh, one size fit all kind of situation. Um, yeah, I think true. I think there's a few other schools that uh, are lining up to as a case of we can hear you. Yes, we can hear you very well. Okay, good. <laughs> Hi. 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 I'm Cynthia from MCK Surian and we would like to ask, do you do forensic for cybercrime? Oh, do you do, do you do forensic? Okay. Um, personally, Could I've, done, I've done some related things. Um, networks are really cool. So finding out where people come from just by looking up their addresses and things. So I can talk to someone on the internet and I can find out whether they're in France or Germany or which um, is kind of creepy, actually. But no, I know I know a lot of people who do forensics back in the UK, um, and it's kind of related. So, when your computer dies, and you've lost all your work. Being able to pull data back off it, recovery systems. Ah, recovery. Yeah. So that's kind of the same thing as forensics. Mm. So recovering back uh, data that has been deleted or data that has been lost. Yeah, so some of us can work in law enforcement mm. with people like Sheila and lawyers where they have possibly a criminal, maybe not, maybe he's innocent, who's deleted things, deleted evidence on his computer system and you have to be able to find it again. And that's exactly the same as when you accidentally empty your recycle bin. Um, so yeah, university covers that kind of stage of things. But it's also something you can learn on your own. It's pretty simple to use that kind of program. So honestly, I don't do that kind of thing. People write a program to fetch the data for me, and I just point and click. It's a lot easier. So uh, but going into forensic, I think you can also have programs uh, to identify uh, thumbprints and stuff. Yeah, so security is another aspect. Uh, um, there are some people who get paid to break into computer systems, which hackers. Uh, basically paid hackers, yeah, okay, all right. which is something I'd really like to do, but I don't have the time for it. So there's a lot of things. Forensics is kind of like trying to figure out what happened, isn't it? Mm, so yeah. law enforcement are always looking for talented computer engineers. That's another area you can always find a position in. There aren't enough people doing it. It's quite difficult, Yeah. but it's very rewarding. All right. So that is for students who are interested in going into law enforcement, the police force maybe, and also have uh, an interest in computer science. That's it. Wow, combining a lot of fields together, that's very interesting. Uh, I think we also have a few more questions, but we will be cutting short really quickly. So we'll take two more questions, I guess. Yes. Uh, hi, SMK Putrajaya, is it? Yeah, sorry. 
That's okay if you didn't enjoy it. Question. Uh, my question is, uh, is software engineering and computer science the same thing? Good question. Get it? Basically, yes. Some computer scientists might shout at me for saying that. Um, computer science is a top level thing, and software engineering is a specialty within it. So that's what we were explaining about earlier, the difference between hardware and software. You study everything as a scientist, and then you decide which one you kind of prefer. So a lot of people who do computer science then go off to design things like tablets, iPhones. I get paid a lot of money to design the iPhone. Um, but they're more hardware technicians. And a lot of people become like me, become software engineers, because, well, I don't like to get my hands dirty, basically. <laughs> All right. So yeah, it's a specialty, but you can go from anywhere within software engineering and computer science. I hope that answers your question for TDDIJ. Okay, we have SMK have We have SMK three Pekan. SMK three Pekan. Do you have a question? Hi. Hi. SMK three Pekan. Yep. SMU is Pipican, are you on? Uh, are we moving on to another school? Let's see. Yes. Um, okay, so what is the difference between computer science and in information technology? Uh, what is the difference between computer science and information technology? Um, wow, that's a big echo. Um, yeah. The difference between information technology. Uh, information technology is kind of a simplified computer science. With information technology, that means things like how to use computers in businesses. So sharing documents, creating presentations. All the simple things you do every day. It's more school. basic, it's more general. It's more generic, it's more business based. So it's about how to improve efficiencies within businesses using computer technology. Hmm. Computer science is a bit more theory. You learn some more mathematical ideas about how to do computers performance, speed, technologies for the future. Like in IT, you would never understand how an iPhone is put together. Hmm. Right. So, yeah, I hope that answers your question. So, IT is more generic, whereas computer science is more of the going into specifics already. Yeah, computer science is like a deep dive. All right. Uh, yeah, uh, we are having the last question from SMK3 Putri. Yeah. Okay, SMK3 Putri. Yes, SMK3 Putri. Hello. Hi. Okay. Um. What does Fort Valley do that could make students more interested in online education? What can the Fort Valley do to increase interest in computer science and information technology? In online education. In online education. All right. Would you like to answer that? That's tricky. I don't really know. I've only been working in an education company for 12 months but it's the most rewarding job I've ever had. And I've been working since I was, I've been doing freelance websites since I was 16. So I've been working for a long time. Um, so from VLE, what do you so think? How, how does it contribute to online education? For the VLE, it's like nothing I've ever seen before. It lets you log into one system and you get all your classwork in one place. It's kind of like Google Drive for schools. So one of the things I hope the VLE does is encourage people to look at how computers work and how, how technology can affect things like education, uh, social problems, social media. It encourages you to think about how you can use technology to change the lives of others. So it's perhaps on its own, the VLE doesn't prompt your interest. It helps you learn. 
but looking at the BLE as a separate system, it encourages me to look at how I can use software to improve education in future. Right. It's clearly made such a difference already that Prog is able to do events like this. Yeah. Thanks so, to the BLE. All right. Uh, one last question. Last one last question. question. Yeah. One last question before you uh, uh, should we end this. Yeah. Hello. We are from SMK Supercam. Yep. Hi. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes, yeah. we can hear you. Uh, what's your question for? Okay. Okay. Is there any institutions or university that only focus on ICT? Oh. Specific university. Specific. So. Yes. Um, the idea of the university is to educate you in as many areas as possible. So, one of the most important things I learned at university was how to keep money. Um, yeah, I used to spend far too much money. Um, but, no, I don't think you'll find a specialist computer science university. There are some universities that are more famous or better at it than others. But any university will have some kind of computer science program. But there's no one particular university that will offer only computer science, isn't it? No, I don't yeah. think that's the idea of a university. <laughs> Not in the UK. It might be different in Malaysia. There are some specialist colleges. Mm. There are some specialist qualifications you can get. But they're not quite as generic as a normal degree. All right. So I hope that helps. I hope that helps, too. Um, so we have come to the end of the session, actually. Uh, but before we leave, I guess, Craig, if you would please give some words of advice to future or potential computer scientists in Malaysia. So, <laughs> right, so sum up my entire career in a couple of sentences. Um, the most amazing thing to me is that I never stopped learning, actually. So when I left college and school, I thought, I've, I'm finished, I've, I've stopped. But that's actually wrong. Um, Computer science is a way to continue learning for the rest of your life. Um, I still don't know everything, and that's my favorite thing. If you're going to go into this kind of career, take things apart, find out how they work, preferably take things apart that are actually yours. Um, I used to take my parents' computer apart, and they didn't like that. But always try and figure out how things connect together. So physics, mathematics, and chemistry are all connected, and they all build up into computer systems. It's important to get as much experience in that kind of environment and that way of thinking as you can. Logical thinking is probably the most difficult thing it is to learn. All right. Thank you very much, Craig. Thanks, guys. Uh, I hope you all had a very fruitful session with uh, Craig Roberts, our computer science from, uh, scientist from Frog Asia. Uh, yeah, so for follow up to this session. I think you can continue tweeting, uh, sharing information that you have gotten from other computer scientists that you might know. Please remember to use the hashtag FrogCC or hashtag FrogCompScience. Uh, that will be F-R-O-G-C-O-M-P-S-C-I. So hashtag FrogCC or hashtag FrogCompScience for today's session. Please remember to share uh, your knowledge with us. All right. And uh, I'll see you tomorrow in another session, I guess. Thank you very much. Bye. Thanks,